Good luck to each of you. And now let's get on with our first matchup, which has our first matchup is Alex Wu, our nine seed from Michigan versus Eric Way, number nine, or number eight from New York. All right, we're, we're playing with the monitors here. We have some technical difficulties, but that's all right, because while we're checking out the monitors, um, we can get to know our contestants, and we can start off with Alex. Uh, Alex, if you could please tell us uh, what school you go to and what grade you are in. Oh, um, I'm, um, I'm um, Alex Shu. I'm from, I'm from Michigan, and I'm in the um, um, seventh grade. Excellent, excellent. And Alex, I understand that you were at the Math Counts National Competition last year. Last year, yeah. Excellent. And I also understand that the last night uh, you were up a little um, bit late. Uh, yeah. You want to tell us what happened? Um, no. <laughs> no. No. All right. So here's the story that I got. Here's what came up. Uh, that uh, right. you know, Alex was up until about five in the morning playing okay. cards, and you almost missed your flight home. Yeah. Here's my question for you. The people you were playing against, was it other mathletes or was it people who didn't know how good you were at math? Um, mm, um, other, other mathletes. Okay, other mathletes. Good. I just wanted to make sure you weren't taking advantage of people since uh, obviously <laughs> you have incredible <laughs> skills. So. I'm very happy to hear that. I'll tell you what, um, Alex, if uh, I could have you test your buzzer, please. Fantastic. All right. And we also have with us Eric Way uh, from New York. If you could please tell us uh, what school you go to and what grade you're in. I go to Scarsdale Middle School in New York, and I'm in eighth grade. Fantastic. Uh, now, Eric, uh, you know, one of the things that we really are excited about uh, at Math Counts is the spirit of cooperation and sportsmanship uh, that, that we see here for each of the mathletes. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm going to need your help with this. Um, I know you guys are competitors right now, but can I ask you in front of everyone, can it be your job tonight to make sure that Alex does not stay up until five in the morning oh, and what? misses his plane? No. <laughs> what? Cooperation. Oh. Cooper wow. <laughs> there you go. I like that. There you go, Eric. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Eric, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. Very good. All right. Then we will get on to the first question of our matchup. And our first question is. The numbers in the array shown can be rearranged so that each column has a sum of n. What is the value of n? Alex. 15. 15 is the correct answer. <laughs> so that means that Alex takes a one nothing lead in this matchup. And we will head on to the second question of the matchup. And our second question is. To make a compact disc, a machine creates a circular disc with diameter 120 millimeters. Alex. 1 over um, 64. 1 over 64 is the correct answer. So Alex takes a 2 to nothing lead over Eric as we head to the third question of our matchup. And our third question is. A certain two-digit number has the property that when its digits are reversed, the resulting number is three. Um, Alex. 72. 72 is the correct answer. <laughs> Which means that Alex has won this first matchup. Congratulations, Alex. Thank you, Eric. And that means that we are ready to bring on our next competitors. Who are our number five seed, Alex Way from Washington, and our number 12 seed, Ben Kang from Virginia. Please come on over. <laughs> All right, we will start uh, with Ben. Uh, ben, if you could please tell us what school you go to and what grade you're in. I go to Longfellow Middle School in Virginia, and I'm in eighth grade. Fantastic. Now, one of the, uh, another cool thing about Math Counts is that we draw in students from all 50 states, U.S. territories. Uh, we have students uh, from Guam here who flew 8,000 miles to be here. So that's awesome. Ben, ben, how long did it take you to get here? Like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. So it was a little, 
You were a little closer, so this is your hometown. You're uh, you know, in Longfellow Middle School. That's not too far from here. But there are some benefits to that, too. When you're close by for the national competition, your family gets to come in. Are your, are your parents here? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that they were on their way here. And one of the things, the reason I bring that up is because Math Counts National Competition, we always hold it over Mother's Day. So we're happy to have your mother here. We're happy to have all the moms here. In fact, oh, there she is. She's in the back. She's waving. She did make it, so there you go. If we could have all the moms stand up. They need a round of applause. There we go. Let's get the clap for some moms. Happy Mother's Day at Day Lake. Happy that you're with us. Happy everyone's here. Ben, if you could please test your buzzer. Excellent. And we will now move over to Alex Way. Alex, if you please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Old Old Middle School, and I'm in seventh grade. Fantastic. Now, one of the things we do at Math Counts is we like to get to know our mathletes. We ask them a lot of fun questions, surveys, uh, and we always love the answers we get back. Uh, one of the questions that we asked students this year was, uh, if you had to pick a spirit animal uh, for you, who would it, or what would it be? And I absolutely loved Alex's answer. He chose uh, Sherlock Holmes' Corgi, which we actually have a picture of here. Can we show the, the picture of, of, there we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> outstanding selection. Can I ask why you picked Sherlock Holmes' Corgi? Well, the thing is, there are a lot of reasons. <laughs> I don't remember which one I wrote, but one of the ones from other people and applies to me is that, look, this thing, you can't, you can't resist the cuteness of it. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. You cannot resist the cuteness of that picture. That is awesome. Alex, I love the answer. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Alex, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Fantastic. Then that means we are ready to move on to the first question of this matchup. And our first question is, in the figure shown, rectangle ABCD is similar to rectangle QACP. Alex. Five. Sorry, that's not the correct answer. It's similar to rectangle QACP, AB equals one and BC equals two. What is the area of pentagon ADCPQ in square units? Express your answer as a common fraction. Ben. Three over two. Three over two is the correct answer. So Ben gets on the board. Score is one to nothing as we move to the second question of our matchup. And our second question end. Todd tells Juanita that he is thinking of a three-digit positive integer. The integer has 12 positive factors. The sum of two of its factors is 23, and the difference of those two factors is one. Alex buzzed in first. 132. 132 is the correct answer. So Alex ties it up, scores one to one as we move to question number three in our matchup. And our third question is, the least positive integer that is divisible by two, three, four, and five, and is also a perfect square, perfect cube, fourth power, and fifth power can be written in the form A to the B for positive integers A and B. What is the least possible value of A plus B? Alex. 90. 90 is the correct answer. So Alex leads two to one as we head to the fourth question of our matchup. And the fourth question is, an online app store charges $2.75 per app for members who pay an annual fee of $85. The store charges Alex. 76. Sorry, that is not the correct answer. The store charges $4 per app for non-members. How many apps must a customer purchase in a year to break even on the cost of membership? Ben. 68. 68 is the correct answer. So Ben ties things at two questions apiece as we head to the fifth question of our matchup. And our fifth question is, in right triangle ABC with a right angle at C, AC, Ben. Time. Sorry, time has been called. In a right triangle ABC with a right angle at C, AC equals 12 and BC equals nine. 
Point P is on side AB, so that AP equals 10 and PB equals 5. How many units long is segment CP? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Ten seconds. Alex. Square root 11. I'm sorry, that is not the right answer. Uh, the correct answer is 2 root 13. So that means that we are tied after five questions, and that means that we are now in a sudden victory situation. The next right answer will win this matchup. So if we are all set with that, we will move on to our next question. And the question is, for an increasing sequence of integers, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on, the median of the first k terms is precisely k for each k is greater than or equal to 1. What is the value of a sub 2016? Alex. 4033. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. <laughs> Ben. 4031. 4031 is the correct answer. Excellent matchup. Excellent matchup. And that means we are on to our next matchup. Congratulations. And we are going to now have our number six seed, Brian Liu from New Jersey, compete against our number 11 seed, Wenton Liao from California. Please come on up to the stage. All right, and if we could start with uh, Wenton, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. Uh, I go to Monta Vista Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, uh, one of the things we're asked all the time at Math Counts is, you know, how do we, uh, as parents ask us, how do we make it to our kids someday do well at a program like Math Counts? How do you get good at Math Counts? One of the things we like to say is you, you, you want to start early and you want to teach your, your, your children math uh, whenever you have the opportunity. And I think Wenton is a prime example of that. Wenton, when did you start learning math, or what was an interesting place you uh, learned math when you were really young? Uh, I started learning math when I was like taking a bath. As a, and how did that work? How did you learn math in the bathtub? Like, my dad would be giving me a bath, and like, he would give me like, some random math questions to do. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Start when you're in the bathtub. I love it. <laughs> Very nice. Do you still do math in the bath now? No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Well, Wenton, very happy to have you here. If you could test your buzzer, please. Excellent. And Brian Liu from New Jersey, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to school in William Morris Hack School, and I am in seventh grade. Fantastic. Now, Brian, um, you know, when I was reading about your bio information here, you and I actually have a lot in common. Bet you didn't know that, but you know we both participated in math counts. Um, we're both from New Jersey, both named Lou, right? <laughs> we're both good-looking guys. I think me and you should start a club for guys like us and call it Lou Jersey. What do you think? Are you in? Are you in? All right. All right, very good. Brian, if I could have you test your buzzer, please. Very good, then that means we are ready to start the first question of this matchup. And our first question is, what is the greatest prime factor of the quantity 110 factor? Wenton. 107. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. What is the greatest prime factor of the quantity 110 factorial times 112 factorial times 114 factorial over the quantity 109 factorial times 111 factorial times 113 factorial? Brian. 19. 19 is the correct answer. So Brian takes a 1 0 lead over Wenton as we move to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is Khalil's current speed is 12 miles per hour. If he increased his speed by k over 20 miles per hour, he would cover one mile in k fewer seconds. What is the value of k?
10 seconds. Quentin. 60. 60 is the correct answer. So Wenton ties the score, it is one apiece as we move into the third question of our matchup. And our third question is, an urn contains three white, four blue, and five red balls. What is the probability of drawing without replacement, first a white, then a blue, and finally, Wenton? 12 over. Wait. Sorry, time has been called. Uh, and finally, a red ball. Express your answer as a common fraction. Brian. One over 22. One over 22 is the correct answer. So Brian leads two to one as we move on to the fourth question of our matchup. And our fourth question is, side AB of square ABCD lies on the diameter of a semicircle whose circumference passes through A and M, where M is the midpoint of side CD. If each side of square ABCD is two inches long, what is the radius of the semicircle in inches? Express your answer as a common fraction. Wenton. Three over two. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. 10 seconds. Brian. Five over two. Five over two is the correct answer. Which means that Brian has won this matchup. Congratulations. Thank you, Wenton. That means we are now ready to call up the next matchup. Contestants is our number 10 seed, Andrew Kai from Texas, versus our number 7 seed, Justin Yu from Texas. All right, and we will start with Justin. Justin, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Otto Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, Justin, it says here that you uh, are a very uh, adventurous eater and you've had some interesting uh, meals out there. Why don't you tell us about one of those? Okay, so for starters, there was this one day where we decided that we wanted to go and eat a pig's head for dinner. And how was that? It was good. Yeah? <laughs> The skin was crunchy, the actual meat was good. Well done. Have you had any pig's head while you've been here in, in, in Math Counts? Nothing like it. Okay, but has the food been good? Yeah. Loved it, love to hear that. Justin, if we could have you test your buzzer. Excellent, thank you. And Andrew, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to Quill Valley Middle School and I'm in sixth grade. Excellent. Now. You guys probably caught this uh, in the beginning, but uh, what's really impressive, obviously we have Texas versus Texas here. Uh, that's two of the team members. We have two more Texas team members who are sitting uh, up on the stage here. This is the first time in Math Count's history that we've had four students from a team make it into the countdown round bracket. <laughs> And what's even another first, Andrew is in sixth grade, Luke is in sixth grade, so this is the first time we've had two sixth graders from the same team make it into the countdown. <laughs> so a very impressive win in the team competition. Now Andrew, it says here you're a basketball fan? Yeah. So, you know, we just saw the Golden State Warriors, great young team, they started their dynasty. You guys, what do you think? You might have a dynasty here at Math Counts with you and Luke over the next couple years? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're rooting for you guys. Andrew, great to have you here. Please test your buzzer. Excellent. All right, so that means we are ready to move on to the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, the parabola with equation y equals 8x minus x squared has x-intercepts at 0 and 8. How many units must the parabola be translated down so that the distance between the x-intercepts is 4? Andrew. No, sorry, there was technical difficulty there. Justin. Negative 12. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Mm. 
Andrew. 12. 12 is the correct answer. So Andrew takes a one nothing lead over Justin as we head into the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, if A and B are real numbers with A squared plus B squared equals 15 and A to the fourth plus B to the fourth equals 153, what is the least possible value? Andrew. 36. I'm sorry, that is not correct. What is the least possible value of A times B? Justin. Negative 36? I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. <laughs> the answer we were looking for is negative six. Negative six. All right, so the score remains one nothing. Andrew is in the lead as we move on to the third question of our matchup. And our third question is, if 100 plus 101 plus 102 and so on, plus the quantity n minus one plus n equals 2,800, what is the value of n? Andrew. 124. 124 is the correct answer. <laughs> so Andrew leads two to nothing over Justin as we head to the fourth question of our matchup. And our fourth question is, the product one, two, three times four blank six equals five blank five, four, eight is missing two digits. What is the product of those two digits? Ten seconds. Justin. Forty-nine. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Andrew. Fourteen. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The answer is fifty-six. But that means with Andrew's two to nothing lead over Justin with only one question left, that means that Andrew has won this matchup. So congratulations, Andrew. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> And that means that our first round is complete. We will now move on to the quarterfinals, where the winners in the first round will compete against the top four seeds that had a bye in the previous round. And the rules for this round are the same as the first. And our first matchup in our quarterfinals will be our number one seed, Edward Wan from Washington, against our number nine seed, Alec Ju from Michigan. Right. Edward, it's, it's great to have you up here. If you could please tell us uh, what school you go to and what grade you're in. I go to Lakeside Middle School and I'm in seventh grade. Excellent. Now, Edward's our number one seed. That means he got the highest score on yesterday's written competition, so that's a very impressive accomplishment. Uh, more, well, hold on, it gets better, it gets better. Not only that, he actually got a perfect score on yesterday's written competition. <laughs> And not only that, he's only in seventh grade. So <laughs> very, very impressive achievement. Edward, I have to tell you, we actually have our question writers who write these tests here uh, for the weekend. They were going to stay and watch the countdown round, but they actually decided they're going to start writing next year's test right now. So they're, they're going to try to make it a little harder for you next time. So, But Edward, it is great to have you here. If you could test your buzzer, please. Excellent. Then you are all set. And Alex, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Excellent, then we are ready for the first question of our quarterfinals, and our first question is, if A star B is defined as A times B plus three, what is the absolute difference between the quantity 10 star 11 
Edward. Six. Six is the correct answer. <laughs> Edward takes the one nothing lead over Alex as we head to question number two of the matchup. And our second question is, square ABCD is graphed in the first quadrant with vertices A to five, B on the Y axis, and C on the X axis. What is the area of square ABCD in square units? Twenty twenty nine. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Alex. Um, Twenty one. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. The answer is thirteen. Thirteen. So that means the score remains one nothing. Edwards in the lead as we head into the third question of our matchup. And our third question is: How many different three-letter arrangements are possible from the letters in Moon Dust? Edward. Two hundred twenty-eight. Two hundred twenty-eight is the correct answer. Edward leads 2-0 over Alex as we move on to the fourth question of our matchup. And our fourth question is, suppose that P, Q, and R are distinct prime numbers such that the product N equals P to the Q times Q to the R times R to the P has a unit digit of zero. What is the greatest number of consecutive zeros that can appear? Edward. Three. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. What is the greatest number of consecutive zeros that can appear to the right of the last non-zero digit of N? Alex. Five. Five is the correct answer. So Alex gets on the board. Score is two to one as we head into question number five of this matchup. And our fifth question is, how many ordered pairs of positive integers, x, y, satisfy both of the inequalities 2x plus y is less than 10 and x minus y is greater than negative two? Ten seconds. Alex. Um, nineteen. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Edward. Twelve. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Uh, the correct answer was nine, but that means that the score is uh, two to one with Edward after five. So that means Edward has won this matchup. So thank you, Edward. That means we are now ready to bring on our next matchup, which has our number four seed, Ben Wright from Texas, against our 12 seed, Ben Kang from Virginia. Okay. We have, <laughs> now we have Ben versus Ben here, so this is going to be a little tricky, so I hope everyone bears with me here. Uh, okay. So, Ben Wright from Texas, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I go to school at Quill Valley Middle School and I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now again, we've learned a lot about our mathletes. One thing we've learned about Ben is that you are a fan of a particular animal, is that right? Yeah. Which animal is that? Penguins. Okay. So I have to ask, why, why such a big uh, fan of penguins? Because they're awesome. <laughs> All right. Fair answer. Okay, but here's the better question. So let's say uh, a team named the Penguins were playing a team named the Capitals. Would you root for the Penguins in that case? Yes. <laughs> now, now, Ben, let me tell you, we normally don't give second tries of questions at Math Counts, but since we're in the nation's capital two blocks from the Verizon Center, if the Pittsburgh Penguins were playing the Washington Capitals, who would you root for? The Penguins. All right. <laughs> All right, I, I figured that was going to happen. All right, very good. Well, thank you, thank you, Ben. Ben Wright, if you could test your buzzer, please. Very good. And Ben Kang, if you could test your buzzer, please. 
excellent. Then that means we are ready to move on to the first question of our matchup. And our fourth question is, how many integers greater than 40,000 but less than 50,000 are perfect squares? Ben Wright. 12. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Ben Kang. 23. 23 is the correct answer. So Ben Kang takes a one nothing lead over Ben Wright as we head to question number two of our matchup. And our second question is, what is the total number of degrees traversed by the hour hand of a clock as it moves from 12.20 p.m. to 3.45 p.m.? Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest tenth. Ben Kang. 102.5. 102.5 is the correct answer. So Ben Kang takes a 2-0 lead over Ben Wright as we head into the third question of our matchup. And our third question is, if a number is selected at random from each horizontal row of the array shown, what is the probability that the product of the five numbers is odd? Express your, Ben Wright. One half. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Express your answer as a common fraction. Ben Kang. One tenth. One tenth is the correct answer. <laughs> Which means that Ben Kang has won this matchup. Congratulations. And that means that we are now ready for the next matchup, which is our number six seed, Brian Liu from New Jersey, against our number three seed, Jason Liu from Nevada. All right, Jason, if you could please start us off and tell us uh, where you go to school and what grade you're in. The Davidson Academy of Nevada, I'm in eighth grade. Excellent. Now, uh, again, going back to these questions, one of the, the questions that we asked uh, our mathletes was, if you uh, woke up and found out you were the last person on earth, what would you do? And Jason gave a great answer to this. Uh, you know, he said the first thing he did was he would go looking for people, which m makes a lot of sense. But that's, that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is, is why he would go looking for people. And I don't know if you remember what you wrote, but you said it's because if he couldn't find anybody, who would he compete with? <laughs> so does that mean that you were really competitive? Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for a competition right now? Sure. All right, very good. Well, Jason, I'll tell you what, if you could test your buzzer, we will get closer to this competition. Very good. And uh, Brian, if we could have you test your buzzer, please. Excellent. Then that means we are ready for the first question of our matchup. And our first question is, if A, B, C, and D are distinct positive integers, such that A to the B equals C to the D, what is the least possible value of A plus B plus C plus D? Brian. 15. I'm sorry? 15. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Jason. Fif oh, wait, no, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, that's not the correct answer. <laughs> correct answer is 14. 14, very close. Okay, so no score yet as we move on to question number two in our matchup. And our second question is, for right triangle ABC with right angle at B, AC equals 16 units and the measure of angle A is 60 degrees. Triangle ABC has altitude BD, triangle ADB has altitude DE, and triangle BED has altitude EF. What is the length of segment BF in units? Express your answer in simplest radical form.
10 seconds. Brian. Square root of three. I'm sorry? Square root of three. Time. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Time expired. Uh, that means uh, no points are awarded for that question. The answer is three root three. So still no score yet as we move on to the third, third question of our matchup. And our third question is three standard fair six-sided dice are rolled. What? Brian. 1927. 1927th is the correct answer. So that means Brian takes the one nothing lead over Jason as we head into question number four of our matchup. And our fourth question is, Gabe is arranging the positive odd integers as shown. Each row contains one more integer than the row before with the integers written in order. If he continues to build the triangle to the 20th row, what will be the sum of the integers in that row? Jason. 8,000. 8,000 is the correct answer. So Jason ties things up at one to one as we head into the fifth question of the matchup. And our fifth question is, how many different routes are there from A to B if travel must be along the lattice shown moving only up and to the right? Jason. 86. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Brian. 34. 34. Sorry, that is not the correct answer. Uh, the answer is 42, which means that we are back in sudden victory situation where the next right answer will win the matchup. And we will move on to that question. And the question is, let f of x equals x to the floor of f, where the floor of f is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. How many integers from 1 to 10 inclusive are in the range of f? Brian. Five. Sorry, that is not the correct answer. 10 seconds. Jason. Six. Six is the correct answer. <laughs> Which means that Jason wins this matchup. And that means that we are ready for our last quarterfinal matchup, which has our number two seed, Andrew Kai from Texas, against our number two seed, Luke Robitaille from Texas. <laughs> All right, Luke, uh, since you're new to the stage here, if you could please tell us where you go to school and what grade you're in. I'm homeschooled and I'm in sixth grade. Excellent. Now. Luke had one of the best responses I saw in all of the questions that, that we, uh, we collected from a math leads this year. It said that uh, you knew that you were funny by the age of four months old. And I have to know, how did you know that you were funny at four months old? Well, my, my mother would, like there was, when I was very young, she would, like there was a game where we, where, that we would play when she would come up to me and it's like, she would say, bah, and that would startle me and I would laugh. And then, <laughs> So one day I did that to her. <laughs> nice. Way to turn the, turn the tides there. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, Luke, we're happy to have you here. Uh, if you could test your buzzer, please. And excellent. And if we could have Andrew, your teammate from Texas, test his buzzer. All right. So two sixth graders from Texas should be a good matchup. And we will get on with that with our first question. And our first question is, Every product of two of the three numbers, 28, 50, and x, is divisible by the third number. What is the least possible positive integer value of x? Luke. 350. 350 is the correct answer. Wow. Thank you. 
So Luke has the one nothing lead over Andrew as we move on to the second question of our matchup. And our second question is, what is the greatest common factor of five to the fourth minus 16 and five cubed minus, Luke? Three. Three is the correct answer. So Luke takes a two nothing lead over Andrew as we move on to question number three of our matchup. And our third question is, two long strips of tape, each two inches wide, overlap at an angle of 45 degrees. What is the area of their, in Luke? Two root two. I'm sorry that it's not the correct answer. What is the area of their intersection in square inches? Express your answer in simplest radical form. Andrew. Four root two. Four root two is the correct answer. So Andrew gets on the board, score is two to one. Luke is still in the lead as we move on to the fourth question of our matchup. And our fourth question is, the six faces of a four by four by four cube are painted red. The cube is then divided into unit cubes. Luke. One over four. One over four is the correct answer. Which means Luke has won this matchup. And it also means that we have now reached the semifinals with only four students remaining with a chance to become the national champion. For the rest of the competition, our rules will change slightly. From this point on, in order to win a round, our mathletes will have to answer four questions correctly. Is this change clear to all of our competitors? We good? All right, then that means we are Going to move on to our first semifinal matchup, which is our number 12 seed, Ben Kang from Virginia, against our number one seed, Edward Wan from Washington. All right. So you guys have been up here before. We will just have you guys test your buzzers. Edward, can you test your buzzer? Excellent. Ben, you're good. All right, you guys are quick on the buzzers. Very good, that means you're ready to get started and we will move right on to question number one of the matchup. And that question is, when the value of the expression one over the quantity one plus root 403 is written in decimal form, what is the hundredths digit? Edward. Five. I'm sorry that it's not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Ben. Four. Four is the correct answer. Yes, so Ben gets on the board, scores one to nothing as we head into the second question of our matchup. And our next question is, what is the missing digit in the equation? 15 factori factorial equals one, three, zero, seven, six, seven, four, three, six, blank, zero, zero, zero. Edward. Seven. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Ben. Eight. Eight is the correct answer. So Ben leads two to zero over Edward as we head into the third question of our matchup. And our next question is, a box has an open top and its length is twice its width and three times its height. Edward. Time. If 486 square inches of material are required to make the box, what is the sum of its three dimensions in inches? Ten seconds. Ben. Four. 
Ben. 27. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is 33. So that means the score remains two to nothing. Ben in the lead as we move on to the next question of our matchup. And our next question is, the point three five is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the point negative one two and then reflected over the line y equals x. What is the y coordinate of the resulting image? Edward. Negative four. Negative four is the correct answer. So Edward gets on the board, scores two to one. As we move to the next question of the matchup, and our next question is, the bagel shop has a bin containing 300 bagels, 100 in each of three flavors. If Bjorn randomly selects three bagels from the bin without replacement, what is the probability that he selects bagels in three different flavors? Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest hundredth. Edward. 0.11. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Ben. 0.47. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is 0 0.22. 0.22. So, score remains two to one, and we move on in this matchup to our next question, and the question is, the circumference of a certain circle is equal to the perimeter of a certain square. What is the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square? Express your answer as a common fraction in terms of pi. Edward. Four over pi. Four over pi is the correct answer. So Edward ties things up two to two. And we move on to the next question of our matchup. And that question is, if 144 base n equals 576 base 10, Edward. 22. 22 is the correct answer. So Edward takes a three to two lead over Ben. We move on to the next question of our matchup, and that question is, what is the least positive integer k for which the sum of the first k positive integers? Edward. 200. 200 is the correct answer. So our top seed moves on. And that means we are ready for our second semifinal matchup, which is our two seed, Luke Robitaille from Texas, against our number three seed, Jason Liu from Nevada. All right. All right. Since you guys have been up here before, we will just have you test your buzzers. We will start with Luke. If you could test your buzzer, please. Very good, and if we could have Jason, yeah, you're good. All right, so, I love it. All right, we are gonna get right into the first question of our matchup, and that first question is, a standard die is altered so that when rolled, the top face displays a four three times as often as it displays each of the other five numbers. If the die is rolled twice, Luke. 25 over 64. 25 over 64 is the correct answer. Luke takes the one nothing lead over Jason, and we'll move on to question number two. And that question is, what is the value of one plus, Luke? Three over two. Three over two is the correct answer. All right, score is two to nothing. Luke is in the lead, and we'll move on to our next question. And that next question is, the line y equals x divides the circle given by the quantity x minus three squared plus the quantity y plus one squared equals 16 into two parts. What is the area of the smaller part in square units? 
Express your answer in terms of pi. Luke. Four pi minus eight. Four pi minus eight is the correct answer. Luke leads 3-0. As we move on to the next question in our matchup, and that question is, in a school election involving three candidates, Ellen got E percent of the votes, Fran got F percent of the votes, and Gail got G percent of the votes. If E equals F plus four, F equals G plus five, and 226 students voted for Ellen, how many votes were cast all together? Luke. 600. 600 is the correct answer. So that means that we are now into the final round of competition, and the winner of this round will be our 2016 national champion. The two students competing for this honor our two top seeds, number one, Edward Wan from Washington, and number two, Luke Robitaille from Texas. And again, pretty remarkable. We have a seventh grader versus a sixth grader. So, you know, you guys, no matter who wins this year, you'll just come back next year, try it again, right? <laughs> there you go. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll start off. Luke, can we have you test your buzzer, please? Very good. Edward, can you test yours, please? Very good. Then we will move on to the first question of our finals. And our first question is, square P, Q, R, S is inscribed in square A, B, C, D, so that A, P, Luke. 11. 11 is the correct answer. So Luke takes a 1-0 lead as we move on to the second question of the finals. And our second question is, what is the value of the express? Edward. 16. 16 is the correct answer. Excellent. Thank you. That question was a mouthful. I'm glad I didn't have to say it. So that's, I appreciate the help on that one. Score is now 1-1. One one. Uh, all tied up, and we'll move on to the next question of our matchup. And the question is, the polygon shown here is made by joining 512 unit squares along their sides without forming any two by two squares. What is the perimeter of this polygon in units? Edward. 1,026. 1,026 is the correct answer. Edward leads two to one. As we move on to the next question of our matchup, and our next question is, eight marbles numbered one through eight are placed in a bag. Luke. One over six. One over six is the correct answer. <laughs> Luke ties things up, scores two to two. And we move on to the next question of the matchup, and that question is, David and Manuel get on a 50-step escalator. David at the bottom and Manuel at the top. The escalator is moving upward. David hops up one step at a time at a constant rate and reaches the top in 30 hops. Manuel, Luke. 70. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. David hops up one step at a time at a constant rate and reaches the top in 30 hops. Manuel hops down one step at a time at the same rate as David. How many hops will Manuel need to reach the bottom? Ten seconds. Edward. 150. 150 is the correct answer. All right, Edward takes the three to two lead. And we'll move on to the next question in our matchup. And that next question is, how many distinct integers from the set, one, two, three, and so on through 20, must be Edward. 
Eight. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. How many distinct integers from the set one, two, three, and so on through 20 must be chosen to guarantee that two of them have a sum of 25? Luke. 12. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. The correct answer is 13. 13, both close. So the score remains three to two. And we move on to the next question of our finals. And the next question is, what is the least positive integer whose cube is divisible by Luke? 30. 30 is the correct answer. Wow. It is officially a nail biter here, three to three. The next right answer wins the competition. Let's have a big round of applause for these guys. It's got to give them a breath. There we go. There you go. All right, all right. Then we will move on. We will move on. All right, all right. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. We'll move on. Save some of that for after this. All right. So the next question uh, in our finals is, Giuseppe was born in July. Sometime in 2016, his age in weeks will be equal to the four-digit year in which he was born. Assuming a 52-week year, in what year was Giuseppe born? Edward. 1977. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Ten seconds. Luke. 1976. I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. <laughs> You're both very close. 1978. <laughs> very close. All right. So the score remains three to three. Next question still wins. So we will move on to our next question. And that question is, what is the remainder when 999 million, 999,999, Edward? 31. 31 is the correct answer. 